Okay, so we're back for the third instalment of our Vehicle Dynamics Insight series. Hope you've enjoyed the first two so far, which have covered the five key factors in performance and the importance of role centers into performance. So for our third episode today, we're going to talk about the myth of chassis torsional rigidity. So that's quite an interesting one for me because I have never designed a chassis from the ground up. And um, certainly in my understandings of torsional rigidity, um, the key thing there really is that you want a chassis that's stiff enough that you're not deflecting in a significant manner or significantly enough that you start to reduce the effectiveness of the suspension. The chassis is, or the chassis in deflection, um, in torsion, uh, I suppose, would introduce an uncontrolled spring, um, so it's not going to be a damped mode. And further than that, I think I should pass it over to you. Tell us why it's a myth and um, yeah, what your experiences of it are. So, in my experience, there are a few aspects of the car that engineers can get a bit too hung up on. Uh, there's... As, as we mentioned previously, there aren't really any handles that you can turn on a car that will continue to improve performance indefinitely. They all uh, are a compromise in, in the design phase. And in my experience, one of the, the hardy perennials of these is chassis torsional stiffness. Uh, and as you've alluded to, absolutely, it can be important for handling. But in my experience, the importance is somewhat overstated. Uh, and I've heard things like people trying to judge the, the handling qualities of a car based on chassis torsional stiffness alone. And in my experience, it's, it's just not possible to do that. And, and, and I can start off maybe with a bit of a thought experiment. Uh, so if, if you took a car with the same tires on, on both axles, uh, an equal uh, spring and, and roll bar rates on each axle, with a 50-50 weight distribution and, and let's say match suspension geometry as well, although it's probably not too important. But but when that car is cornering, it has the same weight transfer on, on each axle. And and what this means is is virtually zero torque or twisting moment going through the chassis. Yes. So so in theory, that car could have any value of chassis torsional stiffness that, that you would want and it won't affect the handling of the car, uh, primarily because there's no torque transmitted from, from one axle to the other. So if, if you took that car and imagine that you wanted to maybe inject a bit of understeer into it just to make it nice and stable, uh, and you, you want to do that by moving some of the weight transfer from your rear axle onto the front axle in order to, to depower the front and improve the rear. Uh, so, so to do that, you could you could stiffen the the front in roll using corner springs or or bars, uh, and that will prevent it prevent the rear from reaching the same roll moment that it that it could do before. And and what you've done here is you've you've put some torque through the chassis because you want to uh, take the the roll moment that would have gone naturally onto the rear axle and put it onto the front and. You do that by uh, by tw by twisting the chassis. Uh, so so if that chassis is very soft, the torque that you need to transfer is just going to go into bending the chassis, and and the rear axle is going to uh, roll e effectively as much as it did before, and you'll arrive at effectively the the same weight transfer uh, and the same handling qualities that that you had on your original car. But as as you, as the chassis becomes stiffer you can move more of that weight transfer off one axle and, and onto the other one. Uh, but you, you get into diminishing returns. You know, one, once you've got to a stiffness that achieves the weight transfer distribution that, that you're aiming for, there, there's not really any point in adding more uh, torsional stiffness to that. All you'll end up doing is, is slightly having to, to uh, drop the roll stiffness on, on one axle. Uh, to to regain back to your target and and you've probably added quite a lot of weight to the car with with that extra torsional stiffness yeah so is there like um you know like a, a criteria at which um back i think back from my um former student days at least 
some of the understanding, I'm not sure where it came from, probably Millikan and Millikan or, or something like that. But um, I th a number that I remember is to have a, um, a chassis torsional stiffness, an order of magnitude 10 times higher than um, your, roll, your suspension roll stiffness. Is that something around which, you know, is that something that would work in your experience? Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. So uh, the only thing I think I'd add to that, because I think it's a good definition, is is if you've got a car that is desi uh, designed to run at a, a number of circuits, then you probably want to use your your maximum sort of warp stiffness of the car that you expect to run uh during the season to to set the, to set that value so rather than taking a sort of average value where if you want to run a uh, higher roll or, or warp stiffness than that uh, you're going to end up um no longer satisfying that criteria but but yeah i i think you know by having it that order of magnitude stiffer than your uh, than your maximum stiffness you, you should find yourself in a position where you always have authority to move weight transfer between front and rear axle uh, using uh, roll bar stiffness or, or corner spring stiffness. But as, as I've kind of uh, alluded to in, in sort of the original example, you might be able to get away with, with a lot less than this. The, the key, I think, is a place where uh, you're, you're no longer constrained by your chassis torsional stiffness when it comes to manipulating weight transfer between different axles. So touching on warp a little bit, so we've talked about um, you know lateral loading and and um, distributions of roll stiffness etc. Et how do you um, how does the um, how does the chassis torsional stiffness um, affect performance? in situations where you're encountering the warp mode mid-corner, for example. So um, if you had a, a chassis on the softer side in torsional stiffness, um, it seems to me that it would accommodate that warp or comply to that warp mode um, easier, which then is nicer for the tyres. That's generally your understanding. And um, yeah, anything, anything else you want to add on that? Yeah, so we, we've talked a little bit about warp track surfaces uh, before in the in the last episodes. The there are definitely occasions where you you'd want to reduce warp stiffness in order to get the you know an even distribution of handling, uh, even distribution of, of vertical tire load uh, uh, across all four tires to maximize your grip, and in those situations. Uh, absolutely, a, a high chassis torsional stiffness isn't isn't doing a great deal for you. It, what it does allow you to do is is precisely control how you're going to achieve that that stiffness, be it through um, you know corner springs or or roll bars, rather than it you know purely being a function of of the chassis twisting. Absolutely, and and cars that uh, are in that situ situation more often than not. So maybe uh, maybe uh, your um, your WRC rally cars, uh, the uh, anything anything off road, the the chassis torsional stiffness in in those situations isn't going to need to be as high as your your very high roll and and warp stiffness um, uh, for uh, series like your like Formula One like. Uh, you know, the, the sports prototypes, the, the more hypercars and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and so you mentioned warp stiffness. That's obviously coupled to roll stiffness. Yep. Um, is there any other adjustments or anything you can do to decouple that? Perhaps um, through having a, an, a stiffness adjustable chassis? So to decouple roll and warp stiffness, in my experience, you need some way of interconnecting the, the front and rear suspension systems. And there, there have been various attempts at doing this, uh, but I wouldn't say any of them have uh, sort of truly uh, demonstrated themselves to be, you know, must-haves. Uh, and a lot of them have, have been banned by 
you know, respective governing bodies uh, to prevent uh, one team, you know, running away with with a high competitive advantage. So, you know, whilst uh, a lot of what we talked about has been, uh, you can put, place too much importance on chassis torsional stiffness. Uh, I think the only thing to add is that a low torsional stiffness is probably a symptom of a chassis that's that's flexible in other ways as well. And these are certainly things that, that might come in to limit the handling of your car. And, uh, and, and definitely performing the function of, of the chassis, uh, another function of the chassis, which is to kind of house and secure all the other systems in the car uh, in, in one place. So uh, again, uh, nothing's a problem until it is having a, a, a chassis torsional stiffness that, that drops below uh, a window of acceptability is is definitely um, something that could limit your performance but it's but the, I suppose the point of this discussion is it's it's definitely not something you can increase and increase forever and expect to see a gain in performance of your car overall yeah and I have certainly heard it framed in that way um, you know, it's, it's kind of used as like a, almost like a marketing um, buzzword sometimes, right? So, you know. Yeah, and and, and, and people, would, I've, I've heard people try and sell like road cars on the basis of chassis torsion. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, given that I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm never going to change the springs and bars and, uh, on this car, uh, you know, there's probably more important things that I need to worry about compared to the chassis torsion or something. In general, um, you know, in a general sense, with regards to chassis design, certain, you know, the, the an open Formula car um, has, I guess, more of an inherent flaw in in its shape in um, getting the the torsional stiffness where you'd want it to be more so than um, perhaps a closed cockpit car. But how difficult generally is it to reach torsional stiffness targets on, uh, you know, very high downforce, high high roll stiffness um, chassis. So all the cars that, uh, all the design processes that I've been involved in, the the targets for the chassis primarily relate to the strength of the car. So obviously you don't want to be, you know, hitting curbs and uh, shearing the chassis in, in two parts because it's, it's not strong enough to take the loads. Uh, and there will be there's pro, there may also be uh, uh, impact test targets that need to be hit, and all of these uh, are are kind of the big players in in kind of dictating what your your chassis is going to look like in terms of uh, where all the structural elements need to be and the loads that that they need to take. And what what I tend to tend to find. Uh, is that when when you design a, a chassis like that to be strong enough, it, it usually tends to be stiff enough as well, and that there there doesn't always need to be a a target relating to uh, stiffness that kind of comes in along there. It, it's quite easy in a simulation to to do a test uh, to see if you've got a. Uh, a, a chassis that's maybe softer than you expected, whether that's going to cause you any problems uh, setting up a, a car for a, a, a high roll stiffness circuit, for example. But uh, yeah, I think my my advice with a lot of these things is if if it's strong enough, it tends to be stiff enough, uh, unless you you you, you know you you you've taken a big departure and uh, travelled down uh, and and you've got you've got quite a, uh, let's say, atypical or creative interpre- uh, approach to the, the chassis design. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, so that's some nice information there. We did also have a Q&A input from this one as well. So let me go and re- ahead and read that. How do you combat fuel efficiency metrics when improving torsional rigidity? And that was by Asa Karis. Forgive me if I'm produ- um, pronouncing your name wrong, but Thank you for your submission. It's nice to get the ladies involved in this as well. So I guess the um, the the topic in question is weight. Maybe maybe in championships that are more um, sensitive to fuel efficiency, such as uh, endurance racing and things like that. The more rigidity that you want to add is um, has a weight penalty. 
which then means you need to accelerate more mass around the around the track. Um, but yeah, again, maybe we've covered that a little bit in what you just said in that um, generally there are other targets that need to be met, um, you know, for regula regulatory reasons that give you a torsional stiffness. That is what it is. I guess given that those or the, the designs to um, pass those tests are going to be as efficient as possible. There's not really much you're going to be able to do um, in terms of taking weight out from there. Do you have any, any other thoughts or, or inputs on that one? Yeah, in my experience, if it's strong enough, it tends to be stiff enough, depending on, on the materials that, it, that are being used. Uh, the only, maybe the only point I would add that relates back to our, our first episode of, of this is that uh, chassis torsional stiffness is absolutely not one of our big five uh, you know, um, elements that are going to dictate the, uh, the performance of the car we're designing. So if it was a choice between you know, running over the weight limit and maybe having to run uh, a step softer maximum roll stiffness than you'd ideally want at, at one of your high roll stiffness circuits, then uh, I think you, you take the weight every time. It's uh, uh, it's going to cost a lot. Uh, it's going to cost a lot more to uh, increase your your chassis torsional stiffness to a level that you're happy with than uh, it is. You know, just running slightly softer than you'd ideally want. Uh, I think again, there there are caveats to that. You might find that there's there's an element of the chassis that is is just much too flexible. Uh, that uh, adding a small amount of of weight to uh, can can bring you back in line with with where your targets were. Uh, and uh, you know, again, it, it kind of it kind of relates back to that uh, that statement of nothing's a problem until it is, and it's all about. Uh, taking these, using your vehicle simulations and your track testing to uh, arrive at, at the best solution in, in a holistic way, rather than you know purely stating uh, stating ideas like this chassis torsional stiffness isn't high enough according to our spec. We need to sacrifice a lot of weight in order to uh, uh, bring it up to the level that that we'd ideally want. Yep. Yeah, it's all about categorizing um, the important ones and getting those right rather than focusing on um, on the smaller things. So I guess an important exercise there is to um, really understand what is important to your performance. And um, I guess outputting a list of, of things to focus on from that. So that concludes our third episode of Wavy Dynamics Insights. And um, we will still be recording more. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed them so far. There'll be more coming soon, so stay tuned.